Hey guys, Dynamite Dingleberry here, back with another subpar video. And I'm here to talk about a very special show, a show I didn't think I'd be so invested in, but it easily won me over many years ago. It's a show I hold in very high regard, and I don't think I'll ever find another anime quite like it. It's a show everyone's talking about, and now it's my turn to share what I love about it. I'm going to be talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh wait, wait, sorry, that's actually uh that's actually a different video, my bad. Uh we're actually gonna talk about Attack on Titan. Yeah, that's right. I'm an Attack on Titan fanboy and I will die loving this show to pieces because holy shit, it is so good. Like I said, a lot of people are hooked on this show now since the new season just started, but unlike a lot of people who are only recently getting into it, I have been hooked on this show since 2017, back when season 2 first came out. This video isn't going to be much of a review, because I just love this show too much and it would be kind of pointless to give it a score. Instead, I'm just going to talk about why I love it so much, and there's a lot to talk about. So let's get right into the anime! Oh, and if it wasn't obvious... So yeah, it's no surprise that this is one of, arguably, the most popular anime out there. I wouldn't be crazy enough to say that it definitely is the most popular because there's clearly a number of shonen anime to contest for that title, but Attack on Titan is definitely up there. This was the first anime I ever watched. I started season 1 back in early 2017 before the second season came out, so I wasn't among the fans who had to wait through that 4 year gap. God bless you poor bastards. <laughs> My friends introduced me to this show and I thought it was okay. I definitely wasn't expecting people to turn into titans and for the show to transform into a somewhat kaiju anime, but the first season just felt very... simple. It had a good opening, decent characters, good world building, and an easy to understand plot. It's a very good first season, but I wasn't completely hooked on it yet. When I finished season 1, I kinda just went, yeah, that was cool, and then moved on to whatever else I was watching. It wasn't until season 2 when the show really popped off. <laughs> season 2 basically built on what the first season already established while keeping the high adrenaline action that made the first season fun to watch. Those one-dimensional side characters? Now they're all main characters with their own place and stakes in the plot. A very simple story? Well now there's about 10 different mysteries to solve that make the plot really engaging. Iconic moments? Well now there's about 50 of them in this one season. Season 2 is just so goddamn good and it really showed that the series was only now starting to reveal that juicy ass story it had hidden beneath. It's from here on out where the series gets more and more interesting and everything builds off of this season. And I'm gonna be honest, whenever I rewatch Attack on Titan, I start with Season 2. Not that Season 1 is bad, but it just has the least to say. There's nothing all that important in that particular season that I really need to rewatch it for. The walls being destroyed, Eren being a Titan, Annie being the mate the Annie being the hidden man Annie being the Annie being a villain. Those are all cool moments, but they aren't important enough to rewatch a whole season for. They're already ingrained in my mind, I don't need to be reminded of what that was like. Reiner and Berthold's reveal, however, is something I can rewatch over and over and over again. Then season 3 rolls up and it. Oh, hold, hold up, my, my bad. Season 3 Part 1 rolls up and it gives us some juicy ass exposition. Learning about some of our main characters' past as well as the walls and certain important events was so damn interesting to watch. One of the most mind-blowing things to me was when it was revealed that Sadie's is the one who sabotaged Eren's equipment back in Season 1 because of his connection to Grisha. It's stuff like that which makes the show so cool to re-watch, seeing all these connections and branching storylines. The season also mixes it up by giving us antagonists that are human instead of titans, which I think was a really good decision. It not only shows how our main characters deal with killing other humans, something the show hasn't touched upon yet, 
It also gives a very deserving break from Titan action because if we got three whole seasons of just killing Titans, it would have gotten repetitive. Then we move on to the big boy, season three, part two, which is fucking perfect. It takes all of the elements from the previous seasons and ties it all together into the perfect little package. Adrenaline pumping action, iconic character moments, an engaging plot, and it all pays off with finding out what's inside the basement. It's a pretty challenging thing for a show to build up a mystery that's important to the plot and it actually pays off when it's revealed. I never would have expected that our main characters were on an island and that there's an entire nation across the sea and that the main problem of the series is about racism of all things. The story has always been grounded in reality despite being very large and outrageous at times which is what I love. The season is perfect in every way. If the series ended right here with our characters just knowing about the world, I wouldn't even be too upset. This entire arc was such a huge roller coaster of emotions that I thought I would be ready for when season 4 arrived. And I was dead wrong. <laughs> season 4 changed the entire status quo of the franchise. It turned the show upside down, inside out, flipped backwards, and then shot it out of a cannon because everything is Fuck this season. <laughs> the villains are now victims, the heroes are now demons, we're introduced to a whole new setting and everyone's fucking depressed. Eren wants to kill everyone, Mikasa and the rest are sad because Eren wants to kill everyone, Ryder wants to kill himself. It's such a drastic change but it fits so well within the narrative so when the situation gets worse and worse, you really don't know who to root for. And now, as we're in Season 4 Part 2, there's an entire war going on between four different sides, which include the forces of Paradis, Marley, the Jaegerists, and from what we were just shown in the recent episodes, Aaron. The story is just so good at building and building, and it's actually been paying off. Season 1 starts off as an exciting thrill ride. Season 2 gives us some much needed character work. Season 3 Part 1 leans more into the story. Season 3 Part 2 ties it all together and Season 4 is just meant for us to question who is really in the right here. I've never been so engaged in a story before and when the ending finally arrives, hopefully this season, I hope it's able to wrap up everything in a satisfying way. Oh, but how can I talk about this show without talking about its amazing cast of characters? As I said before, everyone basically becomes the main character in Season 2. Nearly every single character gets a chance to shine or has something to do in the story, which is something I wish another anime could do correctly. But unlike my overrated show Academia, instead of just showcasing one character for one episode and then never touching them again, Attack on Titan finds clever and interesting ways to incorporate all of their characters into the story and then continue to incorporate them in certain times. For example, Connie is a special case where his mom is a titan, and then much later in the show, you can see just how much stress has been building up inside him because of everything he's been going through. Another example is Sasha. She gets one episode for her to go through a certain arc, and then in season 4, her death is meant to signify just how darker this new season is and how nobody's safe anymore. It's the clever way of knowing when and how to use your large cast that makes the characters of this show so likable. Nobody is useless and nobody's getting all the spotlight. It's very well balanced. Levi went from a meme to a broken character with an actually sad backstory. Reiner, who everyone hated, is now shown to be a victim. Even the new characters who recently got introduced have already gotten some character work like Gabby and Galliard. Man, I miss Galliard. But my favorite character in the whole show has got to be Zeke. The Monke. In just one episode, he became my favorite character, and that's his flashback episode because I just love his story and his motivations. I love how his goal is to try and save the world, but his plan is still very much conditioned by the fact he lives under Marley's oppression. He doesn't have the same strife or freedom Aaron has because he was raised to think there's no hope for Eldians, and it makes him so goddamn interesting. I'm gonna be so sad if he dies, like, like really fucking sad. <laughs> But as much as he is my favorite character, he's not the best one. That title clearly goes to Aaron Goddamn Jaeger. It's kind of weird saying he's the best character. There's not a lot of shows or movies where the best character is the main one, but it's a fact here. Seeing Aaron start as a hot-headed kid and watching him grow more mature as the show goes on, only to see the hope in him fade out and become the villain is just a work of genius from a writing perspective. 
giving him a heal turn that's natural yet shocking at the same time is just brilliant, and it's done so effectively. It's almost as if turning a hero into a villain requires actual competent writing to pull off. Seeing Eren fuck them kids Jaeger getting more and more villainous in the recent episodes has just been mind-blowing, and I can't wait to see how his story ends. If there's even one character I can try to criticize in the show, I wouldn't have to try too hard because it's Mikasa. It's just a fact. That I'm sorry, she's she's just the worst one. I don't even hate Mikasa like a lot of other people do, but I acknowledge that she's pretty bland and unlike the rest of the characters, she hasn't really changed as much throughout the show. She's just been the same overprotective love interest for the last four seasons, up until recently where her one stake in the story turns on her, and that's actually interesting since we get to see how she reacts to all of it. Apparently she's written a lot better in the manga, which I'll definitely read once the show is over, but as of now, she's just been there for me. They try to make her interesting by saying she's actually the ruler of a nation, but I felt that was a bit tacked on as to try and make her more interesting as everyone else. Hopefully by the time the show ends, she becomes a much better character, because I have an idea as to how her story should end. Oh yeah, and one last thing I want to talk about why this show is so good. The fucking soundtrack, man! The music of this show is legendary. It carries more than you would think. Every iconic moment of this show is great, but that music just elevates it to a whole different level. The emotion these songs convey just carries so much. If the show didn't have the soundtrack to match its grand story, I don't think it would be as iconic as it is today. When you listen to these songs, you know exactly which scene is meant to be associated with it. You might think I'm over-exaggerating just how good the soundtrack is, but it really does make a difference. The scout's last ride to Walmaria, Eren using Galliard as a nutcracker, Reiner and Berthold's reveal, these moments are forever ingrained in my head because of the music associated with them, and I just have to commend this beautiful man for delivering these absolute bangers. Attack on Titan means a lot to me, as you could tell. It's been such a special journey being able to experience all of these mind-blowing events from this show. To being able to take part on this roller coaster of emotions. No other show has been able to grab my attention in such various ways. This show is just able to provide so many different feelings throughout its long runtime. It can be exciting, terrifying, sad, funny, hopeful, angry, shocking, breathtaking. Attack on Titan is everything. This was the first anime I ever watched, and I've watched quite a bit since then. Some that I've enjoyed, and other shows. But I haven't found something as special as Attack on Titan, and I think it'll be a long time before I do.